My name is Ray's Chaos. You've made it back to my channel, and oh, 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 Ray's has got one for you now. Uh, because Ray's got something that he never gets, and that is a DC comic cover. Oh my god! And they did not pull, they did not hold back on this one because this is uh the cover of The Dark Knight Returns. Um, I don't know that this is actually uh the issue of the comic as it is the graphic novel. Um, but they've done weirder things. Um, and this is a uh, Entertainment Earth exclusive limited edition, and it glows in the dark. Um, Ray's doesn't have a lot of these that glow in the dark. Um, but, you know, you can't hold back. I can't hold back when it comes to these freaking uh, pop covers. I avoided the Venom glow in the dark because um, I just wanted the regular one, but with the Dark Knight Returns. This one's actually a very special one. Um, I've actually mentioned before, uh, that, uh, the first comic book I ever read was, uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths in 1985. Um, soon after my interest in that, uh, had exploded, I had an uncle who sent me, uh, the graphic novel, uh, which graphic novels were brand spanking new at the time. Um, and I believe I still have a cop. I believe I still have that copy, even though I have gotten like three or four, uh, <laughs> newer versions because, you know, the old ones just don't last long. Um, especially when you read it as avidly as I did. And I did not put this book down for a long time. This one and, uh, uh, Alan Moore's Killing Joke, um, were two books that, uh, little rays in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, grade school carried around with him everywhere. Um, we're going to put this guy away because he's just, he's just getting on my nerves again. And so this is it. This is the Dark Knight Returns. This is actually, uh, the, uh, this is one of the uh, best-selling uh, books that DC has done. Um, uh, it's arguably, between this and The Watchmen, are the two biggest uh, stories that have ever done. And uh, I, I honestly think they're, they're like one in, number one and two. The Watchmen and The Dark Knight Returns are like number one and number two. And they have alternated a couple times as to which one's the best but they have always continuously sold. Um, the Dark Knight Returns has gone out of print uh, a couple of times, to, like the graphic novel itself, uh, before DC was able to build up enough interest to, you know, to start publishing it again. And uh, of course it sold, it sells, sells very well when it does sell. Um, the Watchmen on the other hand, um, they have an agreement with uh, Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons to where if it ever goes out of print, the rights revert back to uh, to them. Um, so DC, no matter how the, how uh, slow sales en ended up being, um, they would not stop publishing it um, because the selling of other merchandise is much 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 like Wonder Woman. Sometimes, a lot of times, the the other Watchmen mer merchandise outside of the graphic novel would be selling so well it would justify keeping it in print. They didn't want to lose that property because it was a hot seller. Um, with the Batman, The Dark Knight Returns, they never had to worry about that because they've got Batman locked. And uh, so they could let it go out of print sometimes and come back. So it technically it would become more profitable to not be publishing the books when they weren't selling as well. Um, and they could just stop that production cost and then started again once uh, demand started growing again. Um, and uh, so, in my opinion, this is the, this is the more uh, authentic selling number um, because it was based on, you know, how well it was going and it wasn't just a, uh, we have to keep this property. And uh, so I think it's much better to rate the accomplishment um, 
Yeah, the, uh, what was, uh, this is pretty much written and drawn by, uh, by Frank Miller, um, largely considered one of his best works, um, along with, uh, the, the Dark Knight, well, The Dark Knight Returns and Batman Year One, um, really kind of redefined Batman in 1985. Um, he really wanted to throw the camp of, uh, of the the TV show out the window and he wanted to make a serious Batman and uh, just show how serious you could make Batman. Um, I think the funny thing is though he succeeded, um, so many people get so hung up on how realistic Batman is portrayed and uh, they'll nitpick like crazy. Um, but the one thing they won't nitpick it is a man dressed up as a bat. It's like, yeah, it's like, how seriously can you take it when this dude is wearing a big costume? I mean, yes, there's armor on there, protect him and everything, but like the, the, the whole bat motif going on in there is what keeps it in that ridiculous superhero area. And that's what it's supposed to be. I'm very sorry if I upset people, but yes, at the very, very base, this is a very ridiculous, ridiculous character. And um, take him as serious as you want. Make the story as, as gritty and serious as you want. It all comes back to, yes, you can't take this seriously. This man's wearing a costume. <laughs> and that's what I love about the whole thing. I know there's a lot of people would get upset and argue and everything, but I'm not one of those people. Um, I appreciate it for what it is. That's why I appreciate Batman from his early days um, of actually the Bill, early Bill Finger stories um, going into the campy TV series to the cartoons to the varying degrees of Batman that, that you get. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter because, I mean, honestly, it's just meant for pure entertainment and you can have your Batman and ignore the stuff that you don't like if you want because there is so much. And uh, this one is hard to ignore no matter what level you are because um, it's widely considered one of the best Batman stories ever told. And uh, I'd be hard pressed to disagree. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's it's just really not a lot to talk about. Um, I think uh, was it Lynn Varley was his wife at the time and she actually did the covers so a lot of this cover uh would be a combination of her and uh uh and frank miller um they worked together for a very long time um until they divorced in 2005 um uh, a lot of the sin city stuff that uh frank miller did later on um frank miller actually said while they were married that he wouldn't do any work unless his wife was there to uh to basically, she she's the only artist he'd work with, um, probably because she's the only one that could put up with him. And uh, when he went off the deep end, <laughs> that's probably why they divorced. Who knows? I think they've still worked. They've worked together since, but uh, yeah, <laughs> Frank Miller's not the easiest guy to work with. Um, but that's that's common to say with a lot of geniuses. Um, it's just like, there's a fine line between genius and raving lunatic, and, uh, you know, Frank Miller kind of, uh, he's one of those that kind of slip into it quite often, uh, going back and forth, um, his own worst enemy. But, uh, but enough about that. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, get out of here now. Um, got a little bit too excited because I finally had a DC, DC cover to cover. <laughs> a DC cover to cover! Um, I've got the playlist for all the comic covers uh, here on my channel. Um, so if you've missed some or you just want to take a look to see what they've made or uh, get a closer look at one of your, you've already got, um, I'm happy to have them there and um, <laughs> go ahead, check them out. Listen to Ray's ramble about it a little bit before, <laughs> before you, uh, before you truly enjoy yours. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here now and never forget that life is full of odd moments. And you never know when you're going to be defined. <laughs>